FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome, and you are listening to the Financial Survival Network. Well, hey, if you've been uh, watching TV at all, then you know the biggest story was Roseanne and her revival, I guess, her rediscovery by vast swaths of the American public. It's an amazing story. And when we're thinking about Hollywood, we usually go to our good friend James Herson, fellow uh, attorney and also uh, has an M.A. in media psychology, best-selling author. James, welcome back. Hey, great to be with you, Kerry. Hey, and by the way, be part of the discussion. Join us. Email us at kl at kerrylutz.com. James, Roseanne, like, I was never a big fan of hers, okay? I got to confess, because I don't really like sitcoms. I usually put a H after the S and before the I. That's what I think about them. But this is almost a, I think it's a pivotal moment in the Trump presidency, in the country's political discussion, or lack thereof, of the different um, movements or trends that have been taking place. I think this is really big. And wh what's your thought on it? Like, what about Roseanne? What does it stand for? Well, I think uh, Roseanne, uh, to give her credit, she took a great risk. She took a risk of possible failure because there, all the experts would tell her, as all the experts did before the 2016 election, that uh, having a character that's a Trump supporter would be the death knell of her show. Um, but they also probably didn't like the way she used her social media to be an outspoken supporter of the president. And she went out against the grain in the entire entertainment industry and created a show that was very honest from the point of view, as her original show was, from a working class family. And the, the themes that were brought up in the show are the same themes that got Trump elected. I mean, she was talking about hard economic times, that she had made a discovery that, you know, the government was corrupt, which Roseanne, as a person, she's very active on Twitter, has absolutely now uh, educated herself. She knows what the swamp is. And she, she that her big reason, she's a, you know, former, like, really far left, almost like in, you know, uh, in the kook section of the far left is what she was part of. Um, but what's happened to her is she realized that, uh, that it's the Democratic Party is, is corrupt and the Republican establishment is corrupt and that we needed an outsider. Um, the, the success of the show, it resonated. It's not just you know, marginally successful or successful. This is a phenomenon. The debut had uh, almost 18 and a half million real viewers in real time. And then after the show, they measured people that watched it in various forms of streaming or DVRs, and it's up to 25 million. And mm -hmm. it, it exceeded the Stormy Daniels coverage on CNN. It exceeded Stormy who? Debut. I didn't hear about it. Yeah, who's, exactly. Who's she? The Munch uh, heralded <laughs> Will and Grace uh, you know, debut. It exceeded the finale of the original Roseanne, which got big ratings. This this is this is a staggering amount of people, and the amount of influence that this show is going to have um, actually scares the left. So that now the left uh, bot army on social media are calling Roseanne racist. Oh which is God. what they always do at they, you know, that means I mean, they're I losing. Can, I, Hollywood means, acts yeah. like they're shocked. We're just so <laughs> shocked that there's actually an America out there. Oh and I, God. I worked together with Mel Gibson when he put together the passion of the Christ and they did the same thing to him and they still are doing it. They're still, um, you know, Mel played into it, unfortunately, when he, um, fell off the wagon. But, you know, everyone that goes against the left in the entertainment business is treated the same as a conservative in the news business. And they're called bigoted and racist and uh, misogynistic, etc. And the interesting thing in the aftermath of this, it did loosen up 
some executives to say, hey, wait, there's money here. As it does, it's not going to change the systemic problems of Hollywood. But now Fox reportedly is taking a look at bringing back Tim Allen's show, Last Man right. Standing, which also uh, Tim Allen happens to be a right of center person. And he created a character that communicated in a very comical way um, some of these same issues. And so they're saying, hey, wait a second, we better we better get on this this bandwagon and get some of this money because it's advertising money, of course. Of course. Well, you know, the trend in television for decades now, James, is one of erosion of loss of market share, of loss of eyeballs. And now all of a sudden in one show, She's brought all these people back. It's incredible. And I think you and I have got an opportunity here to start our own show. Probably we could play a couple of internet trolls that might be uh, taken <laughs> by Russia and we're Trump supporters. I mean, there's an opportunity here for us, James. I can't act worth a damn, but I don't think that's really a requirement in Hollywood anymore, is it? <laughs> no, no, especially not in sitcoms. But, but the fact is, Here's an interesting part of this phenomenon. In Los Angeles, in New York, the show didn't break the top 10. I know. <clears throat> but in a place like Tulsa, Oklahoma, it, it not only was number one, it was number one with an unheard of Nielsen score in the 60s, which it, it just. And that, so what happened is what is called flyover country rallied to this show and will continue to do so, of course, because and. It's very much like what happened in the 2016 election. What's probably going to happen in 2018 is that the silent majority of people who are watching what's going on in the world, they see a party that cares more about people who are here illegally than they do about their constituents. <laughs> they see a Republican establishment that undercuts an agenda that they voted for. And if they come out, in the same way they did for this show in the elections, there even the cheating by the Democrat Party will not be able to stop a, a, a victory for the deplorables. And I and I I'm very optimistic that that is what's going to happen. Oh, for sure. Look, uh, all the polls, they were fixed for 2016. They haven't changed their methodology here, James, in spite of of getting beaten and losing so badly. The methodology is still exactly the same, same way they pick voters. Everything's the same. Hey, but going back to this, when was the last time we saw a show garner ratings of this magnitude? It's been it's. You know, it, we're going back to the year like the 60s and 70s before before there were 500 stations on cable with nothing, no real choices, but siphoned off viewers. I mean, we just haven't seen a show succeed like this. The question is, does it have staying power? Is it going to continue on like this? My inclination is yes, because it hit a nerve. Look, all all television shows have a limited sh shelf life. Uh, they're limited in their duration. Other than the news, you know, every show eventually goes off the air. And it will, when this one inevitably does, they'll be saying, well, that's the end of that movement. We're done now. But in the meantime, this could go on for his entire term or two terms of office. It, it should. And I think Roseanne has the clout to make sure it does. But, you know, the cast, for example, in interviews, Sarah Gilbert in particular, you can see that she's ashamed of the content of the show. And she's out there saying, well, it's not a political show. <laughs> and we don't mention Trump's name and uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it, so the writers are going to push back against Roseanne, try to put in you know, their views, you know, they, they want to put in some views that CNN hosts would have. But I think Roseanne has enough clout um, where she can she can control that. She's an executive producer of the show. And my understanding is that John Goodman is united with her. And look, the, the uh, executives at ABC and even Disney, they don't want to ruin the formula that created the golden goose either. 
So they're going to be intimidated um, by, you know, people that are screaming uh, that Roseanne's a racist and could we, we need to have content uh, for the LGBTQT XYZ movement and all this other stuff, which they already, in a sense, do. Um, but uh, so I, I just, um, I think what the show did is also portray the honesty of what's happening to families and friends in that there's this great uh, polarizing effect that Obama left and that stations like CNN and MSNBC nurture. They're the ones that nurture the, the divisions because of the fact that they constantly paint, as Hillary Clinton does in her speeches, the people who support President Trump as evil, as bigoted, as small minded. And we can go on and on. They insult us. And I say us Uh-oh. because I I am I'm elated with the agenda and policies of this administration. And I'm also elated with the strength of spine of this man. When I think of any human being putting up with the 24 seven assault oh by God. Silicon Valley, by the cable channels, by the entire news network, by all of Hollywood, and being able to stand up and fight back at every uh, attack, there's no one that could have done this but Donald Trump at this time. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, the beauty of the whole election, when I go back and I look at it, is nobody else could have beaten Hillary Clinton. And I'm not sure that Trump could have beaten anybody but Hillary Clinton, but it doesn't matter now. But the fact is, you know, he is the right man for the right job. Yeah, he has faults, uh, and we don't really even need to go into them. Everybody knows it. Look, uh, but the guy is willing. There's no sacred cows anymore. You know, Washington is a city that has more sacred cows than Calcutta. Let's face it. Um, everything, you is, know, right. <laughs> True. I just put something up on my Facebook page that, you know, Rasmussen has Trump up to 50 percent approval rating. His approval rating has gone up in the face of all these attacks. And he's higher than this at the same time in his presidency as Obama was in his. He, Obama had a 46 percent approval rating at this time in his presidency. You look back at Trump's accomplishments during the first year, and they're undeniably staggeringly good. His accomplishments in foreign policy, his accomplishments in domestic policy, deregulation, growth of the GDP, job growth. Um, it, it, so I, I believe that if, in fact, individual Republican candidates coming up in 2018 campaign on those accomplishments, they'll win. And the question is, you know, and obviously some of the one uh, of the candidates don't want to campaign positively on the accomplishments of this administration. So they've dropped out people like Jeff Flake, yeah. who we say good riddance. Yeah. But, hey, uh, uh, no one's but, but I think the same that. dynamic. And you had mentioned you had mentioned uh, about Trump beating Hillary, that she was the right person to beat. Trump will have an opportunity in 2020 to run against Someone else. I think the idea, you know, I don't think I think Hillary will run, but there's no way she's going to get the nomination of the party. So we'll see Trump going out against another flawed candidate. Somebody, you know, we, we can name all of the like possible. Joe, Bo- the Joe Biden is Joe, perfect. He's Joe, perfect. Yeah, Joe Biden, <laughs> Kamala Harris, Cory Booker, Eric Holder. There's a whole bunch of them lining up. So I, I suspect it'll be very similar to the Republican primary last time, there'll be like 16, 17 to 20 candidates. It'll be quite an entertaining debate. And if Hillary's there, it'll be, it'll even be hilarious yeah. to see that, but uh, they can't get rid of her. Well, they're going to have to like, uh, give Hillary one of those new, like exo- exoskeletons so that she can walk up steps so she can lift things, you know, her recent performance. And I'm sure you saw it, you know, images so powerful, James, her tripping down the steps twice in India, you know, was just like 
it just really put the whole sick Hillary back into focus. And a woman who's not stable on her feet, what the hell is she doing wearing sandals on busted up stairs in in <laughs> India? You know, it's just a denial on her part. Uh, it looked, you know, she may have had an eye opener that morning. <laughs> uh, she, she looked a little tanked, but you never know. But yeah, I like your idea of an exoskeleton, though. I could see her actually, if she wore the Iron Man suit, right. it would be an improvement over the pants suit. <laughs> and with the helmet, you know, she'd probably have, be more telegenic and, and more likable. <laughs> and uh, and the, maybe the thing will have AI and it'll be able to speak for her as well and know what to say. Because she <laughs> sure, certainly has no idea. Hey, but getting into the whole political thing, media manipulation. We got Facebook, major scandal. I'm going to tell you my opinion up front. Uh I think it's a great time to buy it because no matter how many people they might lose, no matter how many people cancel their accounts, there is an inexhaustible supply of stupid people on the planet of all political persuasions who are not going to be denied their Facebook, James. They're not. That's an interesting. You you know, it takes a lot of strength to be a contrarian. It it really does. But I I've heard that from other people and I, you know, there's some people that they're disciplined that way and they, you know, they only buy according to the Baron von Rothschild maxim, you know, where there's blood in the streets yeah. and there's blood definitely. Yeah. I mean, Facebook is bleeding pretty badly. I, I suspect it's going to go down further before it, you know, hits the uptick, but we never know that, of course. But the interesting thing is on on the Facebook front is that, um, you know, their Facebook had been committing data breaches routinely, and uh, Zuckerberg, despite his, uh, you know, declarations to the public, had been misusing data. And all of a sudden, and you know, you asked about Hollywood. I mean, these Hollywood celebrities come out and announce, like Will Ferrell did and Cher mm-hmm. did, that they're going to cancel, they're going to delete their Facebook yeah, accounts. Right. Sure. And a bunch of companies did. Elon Musk's companies, mm-hmm. uh, Playboy, Mozilla. Some of them stopped advertising. Pep Boys. There's all these people. They're just indignant about the story that broke about the British consulting firm Cambridge Analytica and the 50 million Facebook users whose data was compromised. Uh, and they're it's terrible. Well, why are they indignant? It's not because of the data breach. It's not because of that. It's because it's linked to the Trump campaign right. and they hate Trump. Mm-hmm. And yet at the same time, back in 2012, actually, we can go back to 20, 2008 as well. Facebook gifted, granted, gave mm-hmm. to the Obama campaign the data of 190 million people, users for free. And they did it, Mm. according to Obama's own staffer, a media director. Right. She stupidly posted it in the social media that they gave it to the Obama campaign because, quote, Facebook said, quote, we're on your side. (laughs) What that is, according to federal law, is a violation of election law. Corporations cannot. A payment in kind. Give in kind, if you give something for free, if you or I as lawyers mm-hmm. um, represent or for our professional corporation render legal services for free to a candidate, we violate the rules. And Facebook violated the rules to the for tens of millions of dollars worth of data and did so admittedly for free. But that also the Obama campaign violated these rules. And they are criminal as well. So there should be a Federal Election Commission investigation, Department of Justice investigation into this. Um, But unlike Donald Trump, and here's the key point, the Trump campaign paid for the data. They hired Cambridge Analytica. It's not even comparable. One's a potential crime. The other is a admittedly a breach of privacy, but it had nothing to do with the Trump campaign. Absolutely. It had to do with this intermediary professor who set up an app and, mm-hmm. and gave the data to Cambridge Analytica, who in turn gave it to Trump. But isn't it amazing to see a yet another 
a scandal involving Obama and, and involving Facebook that the media ignores. Amazing. And of course, right now, everyone's ignoring it. It's just sort of left out in the cold. Hey, well, my advice is buy Facebook, sell Zuckerberg, because <laughs> Facebook <laughs> is going to be around. Uh, most of the people really don't care. And the advertisers, it's just like when they say uh, Rush Limbaugh said something about somebody, let's boycott his advertisers. They do it, works for a little while, slightly, and then their advertisers are back because there's no better platform. Here, Facebook will sign a uh, swear to never, ever do it again. So help me, God, cross my, cross my heart, hope to die. That's what's going to happen here. They'll put in some compliance officer. If you ever saw uh, the movie Boiler Room where, you know, they're doing pump and dumps of all these crappy stocks, but they have a compliance yeah. officer. So they will have a compliance officer who will hide his head in the bunker, the Facebook bunker, never to be seen, but he will be responsible for overseeing a consent decree. You know, look, it's how can you like destroy a company that's worth half a trillion dollars? It's it's not a good it's not a good analog. It really goes against what Trump is about. But it does spell out the need that we need regulation. We need regulation of the algorithms so they can't be biased one way or the other. You know, you type into Google during the election, uh, Hillary Trump, and then it pops up a picture with her and Mother Teresa. You put in Donald Trump yes. and he's like got Damien sitting on his lap and he's got yeah. devil's, <laughs> you know, devil's horns coming out of his head and he's in a red suit with a pitchfork and, oh, but we're not biased at all. And that's what we need. Oh. We need no censorship by these entities, fake book, Google, uh, Twitter, whatever they can't can't uh, do it only on the grounds of perhaps indecency of using profanity or pornography, but otherwise they shouldn't have any right to regulate anything you or I have to say. They've been sandboxing me for six years. I don't care about Google or YouTube because it's just not where you hear me. But this is this is what we need. Internet Bill of Rights it's it's the only thing that really can level the playing field and make it criminal if you violate it. So this is going to evolve. Yeah, um, it's what you're talking about is regulation. And, yeah. uh, you know, Zuckerberg's inviting it. But isn't it interesting that the residents of Silicon Valley, the tech elite, <laughs> are always screaming about we need net neutrality. We yeah. don't want to have anybody uh, lose out in content. And at the same time, many of them, in, uh, as you mentioned, like uh, the uh, Google with YouTube, mm -hmm. Facebook, Twitter, they're act engaged in active censorship of right of center accounts. They, they are suspending accounts, deleting accounts. And we're not talking about it extreme things. I mean, Dennis Prager's Prager yeah. University is engaged in a lawsuit Correct. because their videos are being tanked uh, by, by YouTube. I mean, Dennis Prager is the academic. He's it, pretty benign. Prager <laughs> University, it's mild. Yeah, he's pretty benign. So much of the internet. And yet, so what it is, is that they are trying, setting it up, working together with the Democrat party and the left they are trying to set up a digital infrastructure for 2018 and 2020, which exactly. will basically keep Republicans and conservatives out. And that's that's vicious. That is um, fascist. And yeah, you're right. We 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 cannot as a people tolerate that kind of control. And that's the problem is we're dealing with monopolies. Yeah. And so it may be time for antitrust. Well, look, it's, so they need to be treated as common carriers, just like your telephone company couldn't say, you know, we really don't like James Harrison. He's on the phone too much. He says bad things about bad pe about people. And, you know, we're just going to not allow people to call him and we're not going to take his calls. And then FedEx says, you know, that James Hurston, man, he, he just doesn't fit into Hollywood. We're going to stop delivering and picking up packages for him. We're not going to do business with him. And then you try to get onto Amtrak, which is a bad example because it's a government uh, owned 
uh, carrier, but you know what? We don't like what he says. We're not going to let you on the on the train. This is what they're doing in China as we speak now with social credit ratings, and this is effectively what these evil large scale social networking companies are doing. They are giving you social credit. If you lean to the left, you get lots of social credit. You lean to the right, you get no credit, and they block you. And this is what they're doing in China. It's been written about and why all over. Very dangerous. Anyway, James, we got to go, but we find you at jamesherson.com. Best place to find your latest work. Yes. H-I-R-S-E-N. I'm also on Twitter and Facebook. And of course, for now, newsmax.com. <laughs> yeah. And yes, for now. <laughs> for now, you're still there. So am I. But hey, you know what? Uh, they might be sealing their own uh, death warrants by blocking us in the future. It's only going to inure to their disadvantage. It seems good right now. It seems like it's working. You know, I, we didn't even mention that one change in the algorithms on Facebook and they cut Trump's engagement level by 45%. Uh, it wasn't like they were artificially boosting it. That was his real engagement level. Change the algorithms, 45%. They cut him. Job well done. Well, you better watch out fake book because, you know, you're getting in the uh, Justice Department's uh, radar. You're up on the screen. And if you can't uh, kill the king, you shouldn't try to hurt him because he's going to come back and destroy you. Anyway, James, got to go. But by the way, be part of the show. Email us kl at kerrylutz.com. Twitter feed at Kerry Lutz. Facebook page for now, Financial Survival Network. Talk to you again soon. Sounds good. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.